Hi, we're the Johnson family. Welcome to church. We know where the Spirit of the Lord is.
Good morning, NAS family. Happy Sunday to you guys. I hope you're all having a great start to your day. As many of you guys know, the board and leadership team here at the church have been praying for wisdom and discernment on how to navigate through these difficult days and how to plan ahead for the future. We want to give you guys some insight on what the board is hoping to do and the format we're going to use once we reopen again. I want to clearly emphasize and express that the date that we say is not a final decision. It is only tentative and it can always change. But as of right now, we are hoping to do a soft opening on Sunday, June 7th. We're going to have two services available, both in the sanctuary, one at 9 a.m. and one at 1045. The 9 a.m. service will be a blended worship experience, and the 1045 service will be a contemporary worship experience. The board has decided only to allow a 25% seating capacity during this soft opening. This means we are asking families and individuals to pre-register for which service they would like to attend. We want to make sure we keep the health and safety and social distancing of every person who comes to church. During this time, we are not going to offer any children or youth programs, but we are encouraging families with children to still attend in the sanctuary. If you don't feel comfortable attending during this time, we encourage you guys to stay home and continue to watch our online services. Please be praying with our leadership team as we continue to make these tough decisions and plan out the details for the days to come. Thank you so much, church family, for continuing to give during these difficult days and allowing the church to continue to do ministry. We could not do it without you guys. I just wanted to remind you guys, you can always give through our online giving platforms at the nas.org or through our new church app. You also can send in cash or check. Thank you again, church family. We love you and we miss you.
Well, good morning again. It's great to have you with us uh, on this beautiful Sunday morning. My name is Greg Davis, lead pastor here at the NAS in Brighton, Michigan. And whether you are a regular attender or maybe you've just kind of clicked in for the first time this morning, we again want to say welcome. We are thrilled to have you with us as we worship to get together. And now as we dive into the Word this morning, we, we are in part three of our series entitled The Power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, we're going to be talking today about spiritual gifts and how the Holy Spirit helps us in that way. So the Bible teaches us a lot of things, and we've been talking about this uh, over the past few weeks, and we'll wrap it up next week, about what the Holy Spirit does in our life. And today we're going to talk about the key role that the Holy Spirit plays in equipping believers with spiritual gifts. And even though we see evidence of spiritual gifts prior to this passage I'm about to read out of Romans chapter 1, we see evidence of spiritual gifts, of course, in the book of Acts. The first time we see the term mentioned, spiritual gifts, is in Romans chapter 1, verse 11. And here's here's what Paul says, again, Romans 1, verse 11. He says, I long to see you so that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to make you strong. Paul says, I impart a spiritual gift. We know that what he means by that, because he says this later on, that obviously spiritual gifts don't come from a man, but they come from God. They are given by the Holy Spirit. And what Paul is saying there is he's going to lay his hands on and the gift of the Holy Spirit is going to come into those believers and the Holy Spirit is going to equip them with those spiritual gifts. Paul also said in 1 Corinthians 14, 1, he says, follow the way of love and eagerly desire gifts of the Spirit. So there it is, just another way of saying spiritual gifts. We need to eagerly desire those gifts of the Spirit. In Acts chapter 2, now this is this is uh, early in, uh, on the day of Pentecost when the, the, the Spirit came upon uh, those in the upper room as a, in a rushing mighty wind. The Holy Spirit came and enabled those believers to do supernatural works. Uh, and specifically, again, this is an act, so this is earlier, but specifically to speak in foreign languages what those early believers were able to do, to speak in foreign languages in order to uh, share the good news of the gospel of Jesus with people who did not speak perhaps the the language there of that uh, native area. And so we see uh, the spiritual gift there. In Acts chapter 19, verse 11, it says that God did extraordinary miracles, and again, that's a spiritual gift, through Paul. Uh, so that even handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick and their illnesses were cured and the evil spirits left them. And again, these are not gifts that can be given by mankind. These are not man-generated gifts. These are gifts that only God can give, the Holy Spirit can give. There is a supernatural ability given to us in order to share the good news and to promote the kingdom of God. And so, again, there's, a, there's an example. When Paul arrived in Ephesus, uh, he found some believers that were not filled uh, with the Spirit. In Acts 19.6, it says, when Paul placed his hands on them, it says, the Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Again, both of those spiritual gifts. Maybe you remember the story of Peter. We talk about him a lot. And over the past couple of weeks, we've referenced as we've come through Easter and through the time of the the crucifixion, the resurrection, and then the ultimate ascension. uh, We know that during that time, Peter wasn't exactly faithful uh, during those critical hours of Jesus as he led up to the crucifixion. We know that he denied his Savior three different times. But yet this same Peter, uh, on the day of Pentecost, being filled with the Holy Spirit, he was supernaturally equipped, many would say, with the gift of evangelism, because it says in Acts 2.41 that he was able to preach the message boldly. It says that after Peter preached that message, those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 people were added to their number that day. That's an unbelievable expression of, of a spiritual gift probably the gift of evangelism that was given to Peter to, to enable him to preach the Word of God boldly 
and effectively. And, and so here's the message we have for this morning in, in a bit of a nutshell. If you are a believer in Christ, if you are a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit wants to equip you and empower you with a spiritual gift to minister to believers and to minister to those in our world. And so let's, uh, let's go ahead and start off with a, a bit of a working definition of spiritual gifts. So what is a spiritual gift? And we'll be going through these this morning. This is kind of a teaching sermon. We're going to be going through uh, uh, quite a number of those gifts. But if you're taking notes, spiritual gifts our supernatural abilities, again, these are not something that, that are in, of the natural world, they are of the supernatural world, supernatural abilities given to believers so that they may fulfill God's mission, so that we might fulfill the task that God has given to us. And I, I think it's a very important subject matter. I think it's one that we need to talk about, quite honestly, more than we do in the church. I think it's often neglected. In fact, if you look at 1 Corinthians 12, 1, 1 Corinthians 12, 1, Paul actually addresses this idea of his concern that this topic would be neglected. He says, 1 Corinthians 12, 1, he says, now about the gifts of the Spirit, Again, referencing spiritual gifts. He says, now about gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. Some translations use the word ignorant. I don't want you to be unaware of this important truth about these spiritual gifts. It was a concern that Paul had 2,000 years ago. He was concerned about those early believers who would be uninformed about their spiritual gifts. And what's interesting is here we are 2,000 years later, and I think that is still a valid concern that I have. I think it's a valid concern that we in the church should have. In fact, according to Barna Research, and if you know anything about Barna, they do a lot of research for the church and about uh, the world and, and how Christians relate to the world. But according to Barna Research, about 66% of Christians don't really know much about their spiritual gift or gifts, 66%. Paul says, first off, I don't want you to be ignorant. I don't want you to be unaware. I don't want you to be uninformed. And yet here we are 2,000 years later, and, and almost two-thirds of, of Christians today don't really know much about how the Holy Spirit has gifted them with these spiritual gifts. Many people don't even know what they are, let alone how they're supposed to function. And, and I just want to say that our Heavenly Father, through the Holy Spirit, has, has given you a gift. He's given gifts that are, that are to be used, not to be hidden, not to be ignored. Uh, but I think what that means, because so many people don't know what they are, it means that there are large segments of the kingdom of God today that are, that are, that are not being uh, used, not being expressed in their fullness because a lot of gifts are being unused. And I think it perhaps may be one of the reasons why our world is such a mess today, why, why, why the church in, in so many places seems to be devoid of the kind of power and effectiveness that I believe that God really wants for us. I think it, it, it can be traced back in, in some measure to the fact that we are not using our spiritual gifts as we have been given. So before we get too far in this discussion, I, I want to talk uh, for just a little bit about what spiritual gifts are not, because I think there was some confusion out there about, about what they are, about what they're not, and, and I hope as we talk about what they're not, it might bring some clarity uh, to what they actually are. So five things that spiritual gifts are not, if you're taking notes, again, you can fill in the blanks this morning. First of all, spiritual gifts are not natural talents. They're not the same thing. Now, there can be a relation at times, but they are not the same thing. When you are born naturally, you, you are born with natural talents, with certain abilities that you might have. You might be able to run extremely quickly. 
Just, that's just a, a, a natural gift that you have. Some people could just run, and some of us are lucky to just kind of jog along, right? So some people could run. I, I know it's kind of the, 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 the season when a lot of our, our, our guys and gals are ready to go play some softball. It's about that time of year, and some are probably chomping the bit. And I, I, I've watched softball through the years, and I know some people just have the natural ability. They can hit a softball a long, long way. And others, not so much. I know for me, I, I kind of have a natural ability to make things grow. I, I love to garden. I love to plant things. I love to make things grow. And, and I, I know I do it really, really well because the deer love to eat everything that I plant and make grow. And so I know I'm really good at it. But some people just have those kind of natural abilities. Some people have the natural ability to sing or, or dance or, or you're naturally good with, with numbers. All kinds of natural talents that you might have. But when you are spiritually born, the Holy Spirit empowers you with spiritual gifts. And, and these are different. And, and this is also interesting because not only can you receive spiritual gifts when you are spiritually born, when you come to Christ when you are spiritually awakened by putting your, your, your trust in Christ, but the Holy Spirit can then continue to give you spiritual gifts throughout your Christian walk. And so th there, are, there are many uh, different ways that the Holy Spirit can do that, and those can become evident in your life. But your spiritual gifts can complement your natural gifts. God can use all of them. But there is a difference between natural talents and spiritual gifts. Uh, number two, number two, spiritual gifts are not, they're not given to just the elite few. And, and I think this is where a lot of people are, they, they, they kind of get discouraged about this. God doesn't say, okay, I'm going to take this group of people over here that I really like, and I'm going to give them all this power. I'm, I'm going to give them all this, all this uh, spiritual power, uh, but the rest of you are going to get nothing. No, that, that's, that's, that's not the way it works. Spiritual gifts are, are not just for an elite few. The Bible says that all believers are given a spiritual gift or spiritual gifts. So it's not just for an elite few. Number three, spiritual gifts are not, are not always just a sign of spiritual maturity. In fact, I think I would just say they are not a sign of spiritual maturity. Uh, in fact, if you have a certain gift, it doesn't mean um, that you are more mature than someone else who has a different gift. Uh, in fact, sadly, in a lot of Christian cultures today, uh, I think there's this temptation, a tendency to elevate certain people with certain gifts and say because they have a certain gift that they are more spiritual. They are, they are more special. They are more mature because they have a specific gift. And, and, and if you don't have that gift, you are a, perhaps a lesser kind of Christian. I, I want to make sure that we don't go there at all. Um, maybe one example of this is, 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 is the gift of speaking in tongues. And let's just be honest, in some church cultures, this gift is elevated. It's elevated uh, to be the most important. And what happens is that people who don't speak in tongues begin to feel like perhaps second-class Christians, when in reality, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14, 19, he says, I would rather speak five intelligible words to instruct others than 10,000 words in a tongue. And, and this can get very, very divisive. And, and I would just again say, uh, spiritual gifts are not a sign of spiritual maturity. All right, so here's number four. Spiritual gifts are also not the same as the fruit of the Spirit. They are not the fruit of the Spirit. They are different things. In fact, if you want to study the fruit of the Spirit, uh, you can go over to Galatians chapter 5, and if you begin to read down Galatians 5, you'll find that there are, there are nine uh, what are called fruit of the Spirit, and you'll recognize them as I list them off. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Uh, and, and sometimes people will say, well, I don't have the gift of love, or I don't have the gift of patience. And I would just remind you today that, that, that those are not gifts. 
these are not the same as spiritual gifts. Those are fruit. Those are fruit, those nine that I just mentioned. And all believers, listen, all believers should exhibit all the fruit of the Spirit. Those are not optional. Those are things that we are all called to, and and it really is the evidence of the presence of the Holy Spirit in our life to to exhibit those fruit of the Spirit. And so so those are, are not optional for us. Those are what we're all called to have. So all believers are called to the fruit of the Spirit, but not all believers have every spiritual gift. Again, these are two different things. Spiritual gifts are not the same as the fruit of the Spirit. Number five, spiritual gifts are not, are not something we should fear. And I hope that you don't, that you don't take anything out of this message today that would, that would cause you to fear any of these spiritual gifts. They are not odd. They are not creepy. They are not strange. Although admittedly, some spiritual gifts do come across as unusual because they are, and I'll just, I'll just say it as it is. It's because they are supernatural. They are beyond the natural realm. So whenever we start talking about the supernatural, I guess it's, it's, it's common that we would feel uh, somewhat uh, uh, strange, perhaps, about them just because we're not comfortable with where that power would come from. But listen, just because you see someone who does something you don't understand, it doesn't mean that spiritual gifts are something that we should be afraid of or we should, we should shy away from. Uh, in fact, the Bible says that we should desire the spiritual gifts. Uh, just, beca- just because you see some, uh, some maybe strange thing or strange person that, that's, that's exhibiting something spiritually that you don't understand, that maybe you don't relate to, it doesn't mean it's bad. And, and in fact, maybe, maybe <laughs> you, you see a church somewhere where, 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 where people get knocked out, you know, and, and boom, they're, they're knocked out, they fall on the floor. And, and, and you might look at that and say, well, I don't understand that. I don't understand that. That's weird. And it may be strange to you. It might be alien to you. And, and, and honestly, from your perspective, that seems different. And, and the reason it seems different is because, well, and I, and I can say as I stand before you today, God has never knocked me down. He's never knocked me to the floor. But I do know this. If God wanted to knock me to the floor, he could. He could. He could do it. God does, God does use things that from our human perspective sometimes seem weird or strange I mean, you look at some of the characters that God has used. I mean, you look at Elijah, you look at John the Baptist, you might look at some of those great prophets and they were strange. I mean, you look at some of us, we are strange. I I think you could make an argument for that as well. God sometimes uses things that are unusual, that might seem strange to us. However, on the other hand, just because, just, just to say that everybody has to fall to the ground because that's the way we do it at this church, well, you know, that could be, that could be maybe a, a, a man-made thing. It could be emotionalism. Uh, it could be the power of suggestion. It could be the, the power of expectations and such. And, and is it possible that, that sometimes we drum up things like that and then blame it on the Holy Spirit? I, I think it's possible. In fact, I'm, I'm sure it's, it's happened. But I'm going to be very cautious I'm going to be very cautious about, about judging it. And I would suggest we, we all be careful about judging those kinds of things. Because sure, we see some things that appear strange to us. It may seem strange to me too. But that doesn't mean that spiritual gifts are strange. These are gifts given by God for the believer to make a difference in the world. And I'm just going to trust that God knows what he's doing and he knows how best to do that. So what I want to do this morning and the rest of our time is I I want to just take a look at a couple of different spiritual gift lists uh, that we find in Scripture. There are are, are actually at least four different lists. We'll look at the two dominant lists. and, and, And we're going to talk about what they are. So if you've got your Bibles, let's turn to Romans chapter 12, verse 6. And, and here's one of those lists that we're going to look at. And here's what it says, Romans 12, 6. The Bible says, in his grace, 
God has given us believers different gifts for doing certain things well. He's gifted us in different ways. And then he goes on there uh, in, in that passage to list seven different spiritual gifts. He, he says this, first of all, if God has given you the ability to prophesy, and there's one of the gifts, he says, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. In other words, if you have the gift of prophecy, then prophesy boldly with faith. And so you might ask this morning, so what is the gift of prophecy? Well, that is the ability to speak truthfully and accurately on behalf of God. Prophecy is the ability to speak truthfully and accurately on behalf of God. And, and, and in fact, some people would say that what I'm doing right now as I'm talking to you, as I'm sharing the good news of, uh, of the gospel with you, as I'm preaching to you, some would say right now what I'm doing is I am exercising a gift of prophecy. It's, it's declaring a message of God on behalf of God. And, and that's one of the reasons that I think all pastors and those in, in authority who, who, who have such a privilege that we are very careful and that we realize just how huge this responsibility is. I, I do think from life experience and, and my own uh, testing of my spiritual gifts uh, that, I have, that I do have to some degree the gift of prophecy. And so that's one of them. Uh, let's look at a second one. Uh, and what I want you to understand is that this second gift is just as spiritual and just as important as the first, as, as the gift of prophecy. The Bible goes on to say there in verse 7, if your gift is serving others, serve them well. If your gift is serving, serve well. And I just know in, in our church here at the Naz, we have an incredible number of people who are just wonderful servants. They serve well. And the idea of doing something for someone else, especially when that person uh, isn't asking for it or doesn't even know that it's coming, it is the thrill of their life. In fact, I was just in a missions council meeting this morning, and I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there on our, our Zoom meeting, and, and I'm talking to people who are just passionate about serving. They live to serve, and we've got a, a bunch of people in our church who live to serve. Why is that? Where does that come from? It's a spiritual gift. It is a gift given by God, and, and He has given that gift and that passion of serving. Uh, the Bible goes on to say, if you're a teacher, teach well. We've got people in our church uh, who have a, an incredible gift of teaching God's Word. I mean, they can read something. You know, they can get into the, into the, into the deep study, and then they just can't wait to share what they've learned with somebody else. And, and, and they're getting into this, and they just love to teach. If you read on in verse 8, the Bible says, If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. Uh, God has given some of you the spiritual gift of encouragement. The reason I know that is because I am blessed to be a recipient of that encouragement day after day after day. And I say, if that's your gift, you just unleash that thing, man. You just let that thing fly. Anytime you're prompted, you just let that blessing come out of you to others. You write that email. You make that phone call. You send that text. You write that card. You go for it. You encourage. I love my encouragers. And I tell you with all honesty, I would not be doing what I'm doing today if God had not placed some key encouragers in my path at just the right moments in my life to give encouragement. And I say those, those who have this gift, I, I, I love my encouragers. Those that have that incredible gift. The next gift says, if your gift is giving, give generously. Give generously. Now, now let's be honest. Every believer, every believer is called to be a good steward. I mean, you cannot read the New Testament. You cannot read the Bible without understanding our call to be a good steward. Every believer is called upon to provide for the ongoing work of the church of the kingdom. That is a given. But some people and boy, I have known some of these incredible people down through the years. They have a God-given love, a passion, 
and, and I'll say it, a spiritual gift of giving. And, and, and maybe God has blessed you and you just loved blessing others. I mean, there is nothing you would rather do than give. Nothing you'd rather do to be a blessing. You might not even have much, but you find a multitude of ways to give, and you just find such fulfillment in doing it. And, and I, I know people with this gift. I know people, I would call them, and this is not in disrespect, but I would just call them giving machines. They will give till it hurts, but they don't hurt. They give until the bank account is empty, and they just keep giving. They just love to give, and they just, they, they learned they cannot outgive God, and so they just give, and they love every minute of it. The Bible goes on to say, if you have the gift of, of leadership ability, take that responsibility seriously. Many of you, maybe you've got the gift of, of, of leadership, but you're not really leading anything. Your gift is hidden. It's, it's, it's being unused. We need to use these gifts. The Bible uh, gives us uh, another gift. You have the gift of showing kindness. He says, do it gladly. Uh, this is the gift of mercy, of showing kindness, the gift uh, of ministering mercy. And boy, we, we need our mercy givers, those with that spiritual gift who can come into a, a difficult situation and just speak mercy all over a difficult situation all these gifts. Let's look at another scripture, and we'll pull some more spiritual gifts out of this. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Uh, this will be the second list that we'll look at before we wrap it up this morning. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 and 8, and I'm going to turn there. This is what it says. If you've got your Bibles turned there, Paul says, now to each one, to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit, again, this is all through the Holy Spirit, a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. Now, let's stop there for just a moment because Paul just mentioned a couple of, of, of spiritual gifts. Uh, he talks about wisdom, the spiritual gift of wisdom. And, and, and I'm, I'm sure you're watching this if you've been around uh, some solid, mature Christian people, uh, you, you have witnessed the, this gift of wisdom. Uh, there are some people that you know when you've got a problem, I have got to talk to them. I got to talk to him. I got to talk to her because you know they have this ability to give incredible advice and feedback. Uh, it's like they have, they have found the way to tap into a, a whole different level of, of knowledge and understanding. And, and it's a gift that God just gives some people to be able to communicate a profound truth. And if you've got the gift of wisdom, you need to be pouring that gift into others. Maybe in a small group, you should be mentoring, you should be available and, and, and investing in the lives of those who might be hurting. Maybe their marriage is in trouble, their, 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 their kids are, 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 have gone astray, and they, they just need some wisdom uh, spoken into their life. And, I, and Paul mentions two things. He mentions wisdom, and he mentions knowledge. Now, I think those are two different things. I think those are two different gifts. I kind of look of knowledge as the, the gift of knowledge is a, is a biblical insight. And boy, there are people, I, I, have, I have talked to many people through the years who have the gift of knowledge. They know the Word of God in, in a way that, that embarrasses me. They can pull Scripture and truth out of Scripture in ways that is just, it just blows your mind. And, and then this gift of wisdom, I, I kind of look at that as a, as a gift that is the practical application of that understanding and insight. So I kind of look at that as two different things, but both extremely important spiritual gifts. The Bible goes on to say in verse 9, the same Spirit gives a great faith uh, to, to uh, another, uh, not to everybody, but to some and to some, uh, someone else. The, the one Spirit gives the gift of, of healing. And so here we have a couple of more gifts uh, that are mentioned, the gift of faith, uh, the gift of healing. Now, of course, we all know we, we, we are called to have faith. We are saved by faith. We have to have an element of faith. But, but, but there is a gift of faith that some people have that I think all of us could admit is just something incredibly special. I, I, I honestly don't know that the gift of faith 
I obviously have faith. But the gift of faith, I'm not sure that I have that. I, I have faith, and, and yes, sometimes it's great, and sometimes it's big. But I, I, I will be honest and, and admit that sometimes it's not. Uh, sometimes, in, in full confession mode this morning, sometimes my faith would be anemic, embarrassingly so. But some people I have, I have worked with down through the years, they have this great faith all the time. And, and boy, these are the kind of people I like to be around. It, it's their spiritual gift. And whenever they hit an obstacle, whenever we come up against something hard, you know, we're kind of all depressed and kind of like what we're going through now. Some, some of us, we kind of get down about this. And, and I've had my moments where I'm down about this. I don't like this. But, but it's at that point in time where you go to these people with the spiritual gift of faith, and they will just lift you up, and they will just remind you, God is still on the throne. We're going to get through this together. Let's just pray and let's just trust God and he's going to see us through this. And, and we're, going to, we're going to look back at this mountain one day and we're going to know that he was faithful in getting, it, getting us to the other side. I love to be around people that have the gift of faith. And some have the gift of healing. I, I don't know that I have the gift of healing. I, I know over the years I have prayed for thousands of people. Uh, I, I, I can go back over the years, I could probably safely say, I have prayed for hundreds of people that ended up being healed. Uh, that doesn't mean I have the gift of healing. That means that prayer works. <laughs> that means that when we pray, God hears them. He hears, he hears our prayers. But, but there are some who have this great faith in healing. And when, when people are sick, they just pray and they have the gift of healing. We see this incredibly uh, in the New Testament. I think in all honesty, when you, when you look around our world today, we, we kind of in America, we have a, I don't know that we all completely understand the kind of faith that some of our brothers and sisters around the world require every day. Some of our brethren and, and sisters in, in China, the Middle East, or in Africa who, who are enduring incredible persecution. And I think their, their faith, uh, it, it, it goes to a whole new level. And I think in many places of the world, and I think the Holy Spirit knows this, and He equips those, those individuals for what they're going through, for what they are facing with a, with a special spiritual gift of, of faith. Let's just be honest. I think people in, in some parts of the world, they just have to live with more faith than sometimes we do. And I say that not boastfully, not proudfully. That's not even a good thing. But I think we are kind of in a, in a, even in the midst of these days, we've still got it pretty good here. And I think it's one of the reasons that we aren't, we aren't maybe as, as spiritually powerful as we should be because we can kind of depend upon ourselves. Maybe even in these moments, we are going to have to learn to depend on God more because we can't fix this without Him. But there are people in other parts of the world who have to live in this incredible faith all the time because their, their circumstances are so different. I hope that's making sense to you this morning. And I think God, through the Holy Spirit, gives those kinds of gifts for people to, to have great faith and to have the ability to heal when maybe they don't have a doctor they can go to. They don't have a, an emergency room they can just go check into. But I hear stories from our missionaries all the time of a miracle-working presence of the Holy Spirit in, in places in the world where they don't have some of the things that we have at our disposal, and God just works powerfully as, in response to their faith. All right, verse 10. It says that the Holy Spirit, He gives one person the power to perform miracles, another the ability to prophesy. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from the Spirit of God or from another spirit. And I, I know some of us, we can, we can just go, when, when we hear something, we have the gift of discernment, and we just, we know something's not right with that. It, it's a gift of discernment, and I have found that often goes along with the gift of, of wisdom. He goes on to say, still another person is given the ability to speak in unknown languages. Again, talking about the, the gift of tongues, which, um, which is the ability to speak in a, in a foreign language that you didn't already know in order to proclaim the good news of Jesus. While another is given the ability to interpret what is being said, the gift of tongues and the gift of interpretation of tongues. 
And then in 1 Corinthians 12, 11, the Bible says, it is the one and only Spirit, and we're going we're gonna to come back to this and we're going to wrap it up here. It is the one and only Spirit, the Holy Spirit, who distributes all these gifts. He alone decides what gift each person should have. You know, that's, like, that's like each of us, we have our own set of fingerprints. We are, we are each in Christ, we're, we're given the unique giftedness. That's why we shouldn't be jealous of another. We shouldn't resent the gift that we have because it's been specifically given to us. And that brings us back to the power of the Holy Spirit. We've been talking about that, the power of the Holy Spirit to distribute these gifts It's so important we understand. He distributes these gifts and he reveals these gifts to us. So how do you discover your spiritual gifts? Well, let me give you five quick things, all right? If you wanna wanna learn what your spiritual gift is, maybe this has kind of piqued your interest today. And you're sitting there thinking, I wanna know what my gift is. Number one, I would say you need to begin to study Because the Bible, as I've shown this morning, speaks extensively on spiritual gifts. Study what the Bible says about gifts. You need to get into 1 Corinthians 12. You need to get into Romans 12. You need to get into Ephesians 4. talks about the five-fold gifts of the ministry. You need to get into 1 Peter 4. Study what the Bible says about spiritual gifts. Number two, begin to ask God to show you through His Holy Spirit, what your gift is or what your gifts are. Begin to ask, and you watch what He does as He starts to reveal those gifts to you. Number three, and this is kind of an interesting one, but think about it. Examine what you enjoy and what you do well. You see, if you're gifted, you're going to enjoy using your gifts, you're going to do them well. You're going to be effective. If you're given a spiritual gift and you get into that gift, you're going to succeed at that gift in using that gift. If you ever say, you know, I don't ever want to help anybody. You know, I, I hate it when somebody asks me to help. I, here's the thing. I really doubt you have the gift of serving. All right? So if that's your attitude, number one, I think there's something wrong with that attitude, and maybe we need to pray about that. But, but clearly you don't have the gift of, of, of serving if you hate serving. Although, again, there's something wrong with that. So let's ask forgiveness. But, okay, let's look at something else. Maybe you don't enjoy that. What is it that you do enjoy doing? What your giftedness is going to be something you enjoy So examine what you enjoy and do well. Number four, you can take a spiritual gifts test. And and, and there are all kinds of tests that you can can find. If if you would like a spiritual gifts test, you just contact the church office and we'll make sure you get one. There there are lots of gifts tests online. I looked at some of those and and, and some of those I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend. Uh, but there are some good ones out there if you're careful. But let us know, and we'll get, you, we'll get you a copy of that. They're not foolproof, but they're helpful in guiding us to what our gifts might be. Number five, most importantly, do what the Holy Spirit leads you to do. Whenever you feel like God is calling you to do something, just have the faith to step out and do it. And the more you do that, the more he proves himself faithful, the more confidence you're going to have that the gift that you have is from him. So this morning, I just want you to imagine, as we've talked about these spiritual gifts that God has prepared especially for you, he has especially gifted you. Think about it this way. Maybe you are a parent And you know if you're a parent how much you love your kids. Maybe if you don't have kids, you love your nieces and nephews, whatever it is. We love them so much. We want them to succeed. So let's just say we we go to all the trouble to select very specific gifts for each child. And we think, okay, we've got my oldest, and I believe I I, I, want to give him this gift. And if I give him this gift, he'll be able to make the biggest difference in our world. And, and, and then maybe we have a, another child, and, and, and we want to give her just that right gift to make the biggest difference in her, her world, and so on and so on. Imagine as a father, if I give these gifts to my children, 
but my children simply put them aside and ignore them. And, and they don't think about it, and they don't use them, and they ignore these gifts that I have given them as the Heavenly Father to make a difference in the world. You see, this is exactly what many believers are doing. God has given you gifts. You may not believe it today. I'm telling you, he has. And there are many of you, you haven't used your gifts. You haven't explored your gifts. You're, you're, you, the church is incomplete. The church is less effective without your gift. The world is a bit more lost because you're not using your gift. God has given you a gift to use in the church, to use in the world. Here's what the Scripture says. We'll close out with this. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 10 and 11. We're given this command. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and power forever and ever. Amen. In other words, church, listen. Do not insult the giver of the gift by leaving your gift undiscovered, by leaving your gift unused. And here's my prayer for you and for me, always that we would listen, listen to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to come on you in power to equip you with a supernatural ability to accomplish His mission for you in this world. And I pray for you, be open to that gifting. Seek that gifting. As, as He reveals it to you, submit yourself to that gifting. And then glorify God through it. Change the world through the spiritual gift the Holy Spirit has given to you. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you so much for the power of the Holy Spirit. This has been a lot of fun these past few weeks just to talk about what your Holy Spirit wants to do in us and through us and how you want to empower us supernaturally in this natural world to accomplish your will. And Lord, I'm speaking to people today perhaps uh, uh, in all kinds of different places in their walk with you, and I'm praying, God, that your Holy Spirit is speaking to hearts. And, and maybe there are some who, who know their gifting, and they're out there using, and they're excelling and making a difference, and we celebrate that. And Maybe there are some who are watching who are a little bit convicted today because they've never really given a lot of thought to the, the gift that maybe you have especially for them. Maybe they're a little convicted today because they're not really out there using that gift, even thinking about it, exploring what it could be, and, and, and they realize that opportunities are being lost because they're not busy serving, developing those gifts that you've given them. And so, Lord, I pray that you would lead us in the days to come. If we're going to be the church that you're calling us to be, we're going to all have to do our part. We're going to have to be busy. We're going to, we're going to have to be faithful. We believe you've equipped us for the work, and you've certainly called us to the work. So, God, help us to, in every way, be faithful in serving you in every way you've gifted us. And for what you do, we'll give you thanks. In the great name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Well, again, this morning, I just want to say it's been great to have you with us. Uh, 
We love the church. We love what God is doing through us. And we'll, we'll be finishing up this series next week as we talk about the Holy Spirit's power. Once again, we invite you back with us again today. If you want prayer as we conclude this time together this morning, don't hesitate to reach out right there on your social media platform. You can private message us and one of our prayer team members will get right back with you. You can text Pray for, P-R-A-Y, the number four, to 94,000. Again, one of our prayer team members will be in contact with you. Uh, we love you. We miss you. Hopefully, we'll be back together soon. Have a great week in Christ. Welcome back. I'm glad you stayed. I hope you enjoy this time we can spend together. We're going to sing some hymns. We're going to start out with one that has a very good message. Glorious Freedom. Now remember, I'm playing and singing at the same time. So if I stop singing, please don't. I will continue to play. Okay, let's go. Once I was bound by sin's bowing feathers, chained like a slave, I struggled in vain. But I received a glorious freedom when Jesus broke my fetters in twain. Glorious freedom, wonderful freedom, no more in chains. talk to the kids. I tell the kids that Jesus is there. He's always there, that God cares for us. No matter what's happening in our lives, he loved us so much that he gave his only son. And if he loves us that much, he's not going to leave us alone. He's going to be there when things are tough, when they're good, but he's going to be there through the storms and he'll be there till the storm passes by. Let's sing this one together. As soon as I find the introduction spot, it's here someplace. There we go. In the dark of the midnight, have I wanted my face while the storm on me and there's no hiding place mid the crash of the thunder precious Lord hear my cry keep me safe till the storm passes by till the storm passes over Thunder sounds no more till the clouds roll ever from the sky. Hold me fast, let me stand in the hollow of thy hand. Keep me safe till the storm passes. Night 
has ended and the storms come no more. Let me stand in thy presence on the bright, peaceful shore in the land where the tempest never comes. Lord, may I dwell with thee when the storm passes by. Till the storm passes over, till the thunder sounds no more, till the clouds roll forever from the sky. Storms come and go, but our God is true to the end. It's good to be that saw, uh, soul that's been set free by him. We're going to sing that song next, a song of the soul set free. Hmm. It's here somewhere. I'll find it. There it is. of ten thousand is Jesus Christ my Savior the lily of the valley the bright and morning star he is all my glory and in this heart of mine forever for I'm singing a song of love divine. Tis a song of the soul set free, and its melody is ringing. Tis the song of the soul set free, joy and peace for me it's bringing. Tis the song of the soul set free, and my heart is It's a great feeling to feel totally set free and free in him to live our lives free as the Spirit wants us to. It takes a surrender, though, as a Christian. It doesn't just come naturally all the time. So we're going to sing a song right now. We're just going to sing probably two verses of a song, and you're going to know it. 
It's one I like. I like most of them, of course, but it's um, about surrender. I surrender all. Sing this one together. I hope you feel that way today, that you've surrendered it all, that you give it to him. We're going to close with a little bit peppier song right now, one that I, I enjoy, and I'm sure so many of you are looking forward to the day when we're dwelling in Beulah Land. And I'm going to switch to just piano on this one, and let's just enjoy singing this song. Spirit here I learn of the 
to the land where you are. I see that day. God bless you. Let's pray. Lord, thanks so much for your love and care for us, to be with us in good times and bad. We praise you today, Lord, for all you've done and praise you for what you're going to do. And I pray you would bless your people today from the Naz and those others that may be watching would praise you and glorify your name in Jesus' name. And all God's people said together, amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.